Uh, we will start uh, our next session, which is a very important session, uh, speaking about what is called the cardiovascular continuum. Cardiovascular continuum, we, 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 we know that cardiovascular disease started by risk factors and it continues its way, causing uh, many different diseases like uh, ischemic heart disease, myocardial infarction, and the latest presentation and the end of this cardiovascular continuum usually is heart failure. If we are not aware about the risk factors which is starting the cardiovascular continuum, and we are attacking these risk factors, we are not expecting that we will be uh, successful in treating the end result. And I'm very happy to give my husband and my dear friend, Dr. Magdi Abhamid, the Doctor of the Heart in the Qahira, and the Doctor of the Heart. He will talk about heart failure in the hypertensive patient. What is the link? What is the link between heart failure and hypertension? وطبعا الدكتور مجدي غني عن التعريف ان هو مسؤول عن الوركينج جروب اوف هارت فيلير في جمعيه القلب وهي من الوركينج جروبس النشطه جدا في الجمعيه. هو هيبقى في بس تعديل بسيط في البروبلم بتاعنا السكند برزنتيشن مش الدكتور اسلام اعتذر فالاستاذ الدكتوره جميله نصر هي هتقدم المحاضره بتاعتها هي اللي هي البيزك اكاديمي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم جود مورنينج ايفري وان ثانك يو فيري ماتش ماي دير بروفيسور بروفيسور عمر عواد فور ذا كايند انتروداكشن My dear professor, Professor Mohsin Ibrahim, the president of the Egyptian Society of Hypertension. My dear friend, Professor Ahmed Al Gharib. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Fatih Makradi, the chairman of the meeting, and all the staff members at the cardiology department at Swiss Canal University for this uh, excellent organization, and for the whole part of the Egyptian Society of Hypertension, Professor Suleiman, Professor Wafa, Professor Mohsin Ibrahim, and the whole board, Professor Muhammad Al Rabi. So in a couple of minutes, to avoid any delay, I'm going to cover a very important topic, which is heart failure in hypertensive patient. And we'll see some data regarding the relationship between hypertension and heart failure. So all of us know that hypertension is the most common modifiable risk factor for heart failure. And the hypertension increased the risk of heart failure twofold in men and uh, threefold in women. Uh, elevated levels of uh, diastolic and especially systolic blood pressure uh, are contributing to inc increasing the risk of heart failure. So, uh, in the presence of high blood pressure, if untreated or uh, insufficiently treated to the target, this is the most important cause of uh, development of uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, coronary artery disease, uh, myocardial infarction, different arrhythmias, especially atrial fibrillation, and uh, eventually cardiac failure. Uh, this is uh, an uh, old study which included uh, more than 5,700 patients uh, looking for the outcome regarding the incident heart failure, new cases of heart failure, if uh, blood pressure controlled or uncontrolled, and over a long term, follow up up to 14 years, the uncontrolled hypertension carry the risk for increasing new cases of uh, heart failure. In 2017, uh, the American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association, uh, blood pressure guidelines, and the risk for heart failure and atrial fibrillation. And they said that uh, stage one hypertension, uh, 130 to 139, 80 to 89 millimeter mercury, stage two above 140 over 90, carry the increased risk for heart failure as well as the risk for uh, atrial fibrillation. So if you look here that uh, in stage one, the hazard ratio for heart failure was 1.3, which increased in stage two up to two, Regarding atrial fibrillation, 1.2 in stage one and 1.5 in stage two. So 
whether the stage one or stage two hypertension in these guidelines, it carry the increased risk for development of atrial fibrillation as well as heart failure. So in, in, in the absence of uh, uh, risk factors uh, or uh, few controlled risk factors, uh, primary prevention is uh, recommended. And if we have uh, more than risk factors, we need to control these risk factors to avoid the development of heart failure. The uncontrolled risk factors in the form of uh, uncontrolled diabetes, hemoglobin A1C above 8%, blood pressure, uh, uh, more than 160 millimeter mercury systolic uh, obesity with body mass index above 35 kilogram per square meter. These uncontrolled risk factors will increase the risk for development of uh, heart failure. So aggressive risk factor modification is highly recommended to avoid the risk for development of heart failure. In the new universal definition of heart failure, which was uh, published last year, and the stage A uh, heart failure, is the patients at risk for heart failure. Those patients have no symptoms or signs of heart failure, but they are at risk for developing heart failure. Uh, they don't have uh, even uh, uh, structural uh, biomarker uh, for uh, heart disease, but those patients mm -hmm. are hypertensive, having uh, diabetes, obesity, etc. Uh, so stage A should uh, be uh, identified and those patients uh, should be uh, treated well to avoid the risk for heart failure. Stage B is, or pre-heart failure, those patients uh, without current signs or symptoms of heart failure, but the evidence of one of the following, structural heart disease, for example, LVH, abnormal uh, cardiac uh, function, or a high level of uh, natriuretic peptides. While stage C, this is a classic heart failure patients having current or previous symptoms of heart failure, which might uh, improve and what's known as heart failure in remission or might persist, which is known as persistent heart failure. And the advanced stage, which, which is refractory to the guideline directed medical therapy, and those patients should be referred for advanced heart failure therapy in the form of LVAD or transplantation. So the staging of hypertensive heart disease uh, uh, start with uh, the development of uh, LV diastolic dysfunction and uh, no evidence of LVH. Then stage two or uh, development of uh, LVH in addition to the diastolic function abnormalities and the clinical heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, what's known as HFPEF, or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, and in advanced stage when the volumes increase and the ventricle dilated, this is an eccentric LVH with low ejection fraction. This is the stage four. So heart failure can develop in patients with heart failure due to left ventricular hypertrophy, due to myocardial ischemia, coronary artery disease, the development of arrhythmias, the most common is atrial fibrillation. So this will contribute to 50% of patients will develop HFPEF, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, and another 50% might develop heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And uh, interestingly, this uh, slide uh, summarizes a very uh, uh, interesting uh, paper, which was uh, published in uh, 2018, Hypertension Journal, looking uh, for uh, the pathophysiology continuum of uh, high heart failure due to hypertension. Starting by high blood pressure and in the presence of comorbidities, aging, or maybe genetics. Then a myocardial remodeling uh, starts uh, to develop in the form of uh, myocyte hypertrophy, interstitial inflammation, arterial wall thickening, uh, cardiomyocyte death, interstitial fibrosis, uh, uh, reduced capillarization. All these uh, pathophysiological abnormalities at the end will contribute to the clinical manifestations of heart failure. Patients having LVH with diastolic dysfunction, which is half path, different arrhythmias, uh, reduced coronary flow reserve, and of course, this uh, at the end will lead to uh, heart failure, uh, current hospitalization, and uh, mortality, uh, either sudden death due to lethal ventricular arrhythmias, uh, 
or bump failure in patients who have heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And in hypertensive patients, when having a low coronary flow reserve, this uh, was associated with increased uh, mortality, according to this uh, uh, paper. So hypertensive patients have uh, uh, preclinical diastolic dysfunction. Then they start to have an exercise-induced increase in the left atrial pressure and manifest the exertional dyspnea. And then the classic symptoms of heart failure, which is heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction. And again, what's mean by uh, heart failure according to the universal definition, it is symptoms and or signs of heart failure caused by structural and or functional cardiac abnormality and incorporated by at least one of the following, elevated natriuretic peptide levels or objective evidence of cardiogenic pulmonary or systemic congestion. So heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is uh, defined as symptoms and signs of heart failure, the ejection fraction 50% or more, and uh, the structural uh, abnormality and the LV diastolic dysfunction. So uh, like left ventricular hypertrophy, dilated left atrium, high left ventricular filling pressure, and including uh, high levels of natriuretic peptides. But up to 30% of HEF-PEF patients have normal levels of natriuretic peptides. What's it uh, mean by decapitated hypertension? This is an interesting old term which in advanced heart failure, systolic blood pressure is usually low, even in patients who are previously hypertensive. So decapitated hypertension, which is uh, uh, the term for those patients already hypertensive, developed heart failure, now the blood pressure might be normal or even low, and uh, uh, who are uh, hypertensive and begin progressive develop normal and even low blood pressure. And this is due to low cardiac output, of course, even in the presence of peripheral vasoconstriction. The problem that those patients are difficult to manage because of their inability to tolerate heart failure medications, ACE inhibitor, ARBs, beta blocker, uh, due to the risk for hypotension. So in hypertensive patients at heart failure, although hypertension is well known to trigger incident heart failure, as we mentioned. However, high systolic blood pressure in patients with established heart failure seems to paradoxically have a protective effect on survival, even acute or chronic heart failure. And we know that obese patients have the same phenomena, which is known as obesity paradox. Long-term treatment of hypertension reduce the risk of heart failure by 50% and is associated with lower heart failure mortality. So if you go to the uh, many landmark studies over many years looking for the impact of blood pressure lowering, whatever the type of medications and the most commonly used in these medications uh, for stop hypertension, CHAPS, STURU, high with uh, sprint. In all these studies, lower blood pressure, whatever the drug used, was associated with lower incidence of development of heart failure. So uh, for example, in a stone trial, 68% uh, reduction, 55% uh, in CHIP trial. So thiazide diuretics were associated with a favorable effect regarding lower blood pressure associated with lower heart failure risk. And again, this slide summarizes the different studies looking for the uh, favorable effect of uh, lowering blood pressure in all these studies, which was associated with lowering risk for heart failure. So LVH, which is uh, associated with uh, hypertension leading to heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, uh, uh, the drugs which can decrease the uh, risk for uh, development of LVH in hypertensive patients, diuretics, to lower extent beta blocker, CCB as inhibitor, and angiotensin receptor blocker, the most uh, uh, favorable one was associated with regression of uh, LVH. And uh, this slide uh, summarizes uh, that in those patients, Management of risk factors, comorbidities, and symptoms as well in HEFPEF is important. So 
regarding the blood pressure level, ACE inhibitor, ARPs, uh, MRA, CCB, beta blockers, diuretics, uh, controlling diabetes. Uh, uh, recently, we have SGL2 inhibitor and GLB1 receptor agonist, treatment of coronary artery disease, uh, revascularization if needed, uh, ACE and ARPs for patients having CKD, and the treatment of heart failure according to the recent guidelines and atrial fibrillation management, antiarrhythmic drugs or ablation. So what about the guidelines for hypertension 2018 regarding uh, management strategy of hypertensive patients in the presence of LVH or heart failure? In hypertensive patients with heart failure with reduced or preserved ejection fraction, blood pressure lowering should be considered. If blood pressure is 140 or more above uh, 90 millimeter mercury. This is class 2A recommendations. And if the patients develop heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, which is an EF less than 40%, it's recommended that blood pressure lowering treatment, including ACE inhibitor or ARP, beta blocker, diuretic, and or mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist is needed. This is class 1A, and this goes with the guidelines for heart failure management. Dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers may be added if blood pressure control is not achieved, which is class 2B recommendation. A patient with half ref blood pressure treatment threshold and target values should be the same as for half ref class 2A. And uh, because of uh, no specific drug have been proven superior, all major agents can be used. If uh, in patients with LVH, it's recommended to treat uh, with uh, RAS blocker in combination with TCB or diuretic. This is very important, which is class 1A. This will lead to regression of LVH. Systolic blood pressure should be lowered in range of 120 to 130 millimeter mercury. And this is class 2A recommendation. And 2020 International Society of Hypertension Global Practice Guidelines focused on hypertension and the heart failure and the same risk for development of half ref or half ref with hypertension, especially if the blood pressure is uncontrolled with blood pressure more than 140 over 90 millimeter mercury. All medications uh, treating heart failure can be given, including ARNI, in patients with hypertension and heart failure. And interestingly, the well-known SPRINT trial uh, comparing intensive control versus the usual control of blood pressure which was associated with this significant reduction in the primary endpoint in terms of uh, non-fatal MI or stroke, uh, coronary artery disease, and uh, all-cause mortality. They looked for uh, the difference in patients without history of heart failure, patients with heart failure, and they did not uh, reveal any statistically significant difference in the two groups in the SPRINT trial. So uh, for hypertensive patients having heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, the last guidelines, 2021, recommend the use of ACE inhibitor, which is class 1A, to reduce mortality and hospitalization. Beta blocker, class 1A, to reduce mortality and hospitalization. The same for MRA, class 1A. The same for the new game player, SGL2 inhibitor, dabagliflozin or imbagliflozin. It's class 1A recommendation. And the ARNI, sacubitril valsartan, is considered to replace ACE inhibitor as class 1B recommendation in patients who are still symptomatic despite the use of ACE inhibitor. And finally, we have uh, drugs for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Because until recently, we did not have uh, uh, guidelines for HFPEF. So now, according to the last ACC HE guidelines, which published the last month, that uh, uh, treatment of HFPEF in patients having hypertension should uh, include uh, diuretics uh, to relieve uh, symptoms of congestion, SGL2 inhibitor according to uh, Emperor preserved study for the using of imbagliflozin in HFPEF with the positive study, positive outcome regarding reduction of mortality and hospitalization. So SGL2 inhibitor should be given for HFPEF, and this is class 2A recommendation, while sacubitril valsartan ARNI, according to Paragon trial, MRA, ARP are considered class 2B recommendation in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So the take home message, ladies and gentlemen, hypertension is one of the most important modifiable risk factor for development of symptomatic heart failure. Heart failure, in addition to stroke, the two cardiovascular outcomes that can be reduced by blood pressure lowering treatment to the greater extent. 
blood pressure lowering by any of the five major classes of blood pressure lowering drugs, diuretics, beta blockers, CCBS inhibitor ERP can significantly reduce the risk of new onset heart failure. Treatment of half ref or half pef and hypertension is according to the recent guidelines. Thank you for your attention. If you are going to know more about hypertension and heart failure, this is a very interesting book uh, uh, by uh, Dr. Uh, Mancha regarding heart failure and hypertension. Finally, I'd like to invite you for the heart failure meeting in Aswan uh, uh, next October. Thank you very much for your attention. Shukran Magdir, this is very uh, good to review. أنا عندي بعض التساؤلات أول سؤال يخص الناتروريتك بالتايم إمتى نعمله؟ وهل ده مانداتوري في الدايجنوزيس؟ ومدى الدقة بتاعته؟ ومدى الاحتياج للفولو أب ومتابعته؟ ده إز بايو كيميكال تيست وهل وي أر نوت جاستيفايد إن إحنا نشخص هارت فيلير إذا كانش الناتريتك بالتايت إز ريزد فده أول سؤال وبعد كده نسأل السؤال التاني. فيري انتريستنج كويستشن بروفيسور محسن إبراهيم الحقيقة الـ NT Brown Beauty إز كومنلي أندر يوزد إن إن أور كونتري إن ذا ديلي براكتس كونسيدرينج ذا كوست بات إت إز فيري إمبورتنت ريجاردينج ديجنوز سو إف بيشنتس هافينج سيمتومز أند أور ساينس سجستيف أوف هارت فيلير it is class 1A to do anti-bro in V because the cutoff level in chronic ambulatory patients, as we know, uh, 125, 125 and 35 for PNV and anti-bro in V. So this is in addition to the symptoms. If it is elevated levels of antibiotics, so this is most probably heart failure, and then we will do echo to rule out structural and assessment of cardiac function. But negative test, lower levels of nt B, below the cutoff levels, so this is most probably not a heart failure symptoms, except in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction or in obese patients, the levels usually is lower. So 30% of dyspneic patients, hypertensive, elderly, having half pef they might have near normal levels of nt B. But on the contrary, half ref patients, un uh, especially if they uh, are not uh, compensated, they have very high levels of nt B. So at the end, it is mandatory test for diagnosis of heart failure. Not going to the echo. But if you don't have the facility to do it according to the affordability, of course, you will go to echocardiography. But it is guideline recommendation it's class one. It is not only diagnostic, but also prognostic, because higher levels indicate that we need to intensify the treatment of guideline direct medical therapy. And in hospitalized patients, I am doing baseline levels and breathe charge level, because more than 30% reduction of nt B level is associated with significant reduction in mortality and rehospitalization. And usually those patients are discharged from hospital and they still congested, so the 30-day readmission and mortality is high. So if I'm doing nt B in hospitalized patients, this is a good strategy for proper management. Okay, then you so add. Target level of blood pressure started down to the in hypertensive patient with heart failure. Other than our most of أو معظم الجايد لاينز بتقول احنا بنحب دايما نوصل بالعلاج لاقل من 140 على 90 الا في بعض الحالات الاستثنائيه اللي عاوزين نوصل فيها لاقل من 130 85 فهل الهارت فيلير ده التارجت بتاعنا يبقى اقل من 140 90 ولا اقل من 130 85 it is according to the recommendations less than 130 over 80 and not lower than 120 over 70. And the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, even in hypertensive patients, are usually have lower blood pressure. And the problem 
in the daily practice is to, to how to titrate, especially for sacroiliac valsartan. They have a blood pressure 110, 100. So uh, once he develops heart failure, the blood pressure will get slower. But some patients have high blood pressure, but in those patients, which is good, because this will allow me to titrate the medications without any problem for the risk of hypotension. So the blood pressure should not be lower in those patients below 120 over 70, and the better to be 130 over 80. Okay, آخر سؤال. Sodium glucose co-transporters inhibitors, the empagliflozin and the empagliflozins. إل بالضبط الوضع تاعهم في الهايبرتنسيف هارت فيلي هل they should be given to all patients أي واحد هايبرتنسيف with heart failure بالإضافة هل لهم دور في العيانين الهايبرتنسيف اللي معهم heart failure very interesting question SGL2 inhibitor which is class 1A now in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and 2A in HFPF and uh, the effect on blood pressure is very low, up to three to five millimeter mercury reduction with the use of SGL2 inhibitor. So they do not induce hypotension. The favorable, uh, the advantages of SGL2 inhibitor is single dose, it not cause hypotension, okay? So it should be given for all hypertensive patients as long as the GFR with the use of DABA up to 30, and with the use of MB, uh, MBA, not less than 20. So in hypertensive CKD patients, I will not give it if GFR less than 20 with MBA, less than 30 with DABA. They can be given very safely in hypertensive heart failure patients without the risk of hypotension because there is no hypotension with the use of SGL2 inhibitor. Uh, excellent lecture. I have a question for one. We are concerned always in treating our patient about the cost benefits. And there is the debates in the written guidelines about the thresholds and the groups. And as you mentioned, hypertension is a very important tool for heart failure. Whether we are in need to do more sophisticated tests like speckle tracking or longitudinal say to diagnose and predict those patients liable to get heart failure. And in this condition, we can direct our management to those patients to reach the lowest level, which is mentioned in the American guidelines. In order not to use it generally, this level which is compatible, because actually it increased the prevalence so much. In the poor countries, we cannot treat 50% of our patients if we are applying the same value. That's what I see that I like in the right way. A very good strategy. You are talking about uh, subclinical LV diastolic dysfunction and the early, uh, 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 early diagnosis of those patients to avoid the risk for heart failure. This is good. And the role of echocardiography in hypertensive patients is to look for uh, uh, LVH dilated left atrium and the parameters of the diastolic function. So by tissue Doppler, by EO over E prime, uh, we have parameters for high LV filling pressure, which can be uh, uh, estimated accurately by echo Doppler study. So uh, the problem in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction it is challenging in the diagnosis. And sometimes we need uh, to do uh, invasive tests in the cath lab to estimate the widget pressure and filling pressure to be sure that this patient having shortness of breath due to heart failure with preserved ejection fraction in hypertensive patients. Echo is ejection fraction 55, uh, no evidence, clear evidence of uh, parameters of diastolic function. So those patients ha needs to assess with exercise because with exercise there is an increased filling pressure. And in the cath lab, you can estimate accurately the L uh, uh, which pressure, pulmonary which pressure. So it's a problem to diagnose half path early, but it's very simple to look for LVH, dilated left atrium, is to look for uh, E over E prime to be sure that these patients' hypertension lead to early 
the systolic dysfunction, which will end in heart failure with reserve ejection fraction. So those patients can be treated early in addition to the use of diuretics, the use of uh, ARPs, the use of SGL2 inhibitor. This will be better. So I will tell you, Sora, hypertension is a precipitating predisposing cause for atrial fibrillation. And both hypertension and atrial fibrillation leads to heart failure. We know that there is a predictor in any hypertensive patient for the possibility that he will get atrial fibrillation. And in this condition, not all the medications are equal in preventing the occurrence of atrial fibrillation. Whether we should recommend doing this test in hypertensive patients to predict those patients, I mean left ventricular uh, muscle index and left atrial diameter, if they are increased, they are telling us that these patients are about to get a third And in this condition, we can change the treatment because we know that ARPs and ACE is the medication of choice to prevent that. Whether this could, should be recommended on, to those patients with long standing hypertension to avoid or delay the occurrence of a third which can be equal for heart. Yeah. Very interesting, Yamagi Manish. We'll take the last question from the audience. Shukran, uh, uh, Dr. Mehdi. Uh, my question really, especially in our area, we are having a high prevalence of diabetes, which makes as well the uh, prevalence of heart failure, diabetic heart failure, combined with high blood pressure, is more prevalent than those which are seen, for example, in the North America or on, on Europe. Uh, putting that in mind, the consensus is talking about a new staging for pre-heart uh, pre failure, which may make a clue that we need to detect it as early as possible, hoping to have a change in the approach and more intensive treatment. How, my question is, how far in our area, in our patients, this will be really of, in favor of benefit? And if it is so, if it is so, uh, outside of the cardiology clinic, how the general physicians will be able to detect these cases very early, putting in mind that he is not doing echo, the pro MP peptides are very limited, and really there are many of the cases that, as you have mentioned, they are having normal uh, peptides. Uh, thank you very much for your excellent uh, question. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know that diabetes and hypertension are common risk factors for heart failure, either HFPEF or HFREF. And uh, commonly, there is uh, underuse of uh, uh, biomarkers and detailed echocardiographic studies to assess for diagnosis of HFPEF or HFREF. But uh, the most common challenge is in HFPEF because uh, this is the role for heart failure uh, clinics. Heart failure clinics are very important for uh, assisting patients having symptoms suggestive of heart failure, especially in high-risk patients like diabetic and hypertensive patients. And you have to follow the diagnostic algorithm according to the guidelines. And you have very interesting uh, scores for diagnosis of HFPEF according to body mass index, uh, level of blood pressure, atrial fibrillation, pulmonary artery pressure. The EC heart failure association have a very interesting algorithm. So we have to use all this uh, 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 in consideration when dealing with high risk patients in which the probability of having heart failure is very high. Diabetes increase the risk of heart failure more. So the, I, I agree with you regarding the early diagnosis of those patients. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Magdi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, as always. Thank you.